So let's refresh why we did all this. We had this expression that was up here that we had solved to at this point, and that we, we were going to see that this integral, because our next step at this point is to integrate this expression, would be somewhat challenging because we have this denominator that has this polynomial. We have this a naught minus x times b naught minus x. That would be challenging. And so what we decided to do was to split it up into two pieces or to, so that we would then have a slightly simpler set of denominators to have or slightly simpler integrals to be able to evaluate. And that's what we ended up doing here is that we then determined what the common fractions were so that then we can write up this, this separated expression. So if we start at that one expression that we had that we're trying to separate, we have this dx, um, the concentration of a naught minus x times the concentration of b naught minus x, and that's equal to kf dt. Well, now that we have these, this y and this w, meaning for this, these separated terms, we can now write a separated fraction for this, where what we would have is 1 over concentration of b naught minus the concentration of a naught, and that I'm going to multiply with 1 over a naught minus x. From that, I'm going to subtract off 1 over b naught minus a naught times 1 over b naught minus x. All of this is multiplied by dt, and that's still equal to kf dt. And so you can start to see now I have these terms on the left-hand side where I have a constant and a constant, and now I just have some term, one of these terms, a naught minus x and b naught minus x, now in separate terms, so that when I integrate this, I can now integrate it or like when I integrate both sides, I now have two very simple integrals because I just have 1 over a naught minus x and then a second integral 1 over b naught minus x. And so when I go to do those integrals, what I simply get is 1 over b naught minus a naught and that's just equal to the natural logarithm of a naught minus x times minus 1 and in this case, I'm going to have a plus to get the minus 1 out from the integral. b naught minus a naught, natural logarithm of b naught minus x. And on my right-hand side, I have the integral of kf dt. This is just kf times t. This is on the left-hand side, or on the right-hand side, evaluated between 0 and t. On the right-hand side, this is evaluated between um, 0 and x. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to retroactively write in these bounds of this these integrals back up here. But what we have is now our integrated expression. Let's evaluate it using the fundamental theorem of calculus. What that means is that over here on my left hand side I'm going to have minus 1 over b naught minus a naught, the natural logarithm of a naught minus x plus 1 over b naught a naught natural logarithm of b naught minus x and from that I'm going to be subtracting off minus 1 over b naught minus a naught times the natural logarithm of a naught because now this is where x is equal to 0. And to that I'm going to add 1 over b naught minus a naught, natural logarithm of b naught. Because then again, this is where my x is equal to 0. And that's just going to be equal to kf t minus 0, me evaluating the integral on the right-hand side, doing the fundamental theorem of calculus there. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to multiply through my minus sign, so that becomes a plus, this becomes a minus. And so what I have now is four terms that are exactly the same out front, this 1 over b naught minus a naught, so that I'm going to distribute out. So I'm going to have 1 over b naught minus a naught, and then I'm just going to start just writing out all my terms again. I have the natural logarithm of 
a naught minus x plus the natural logarithm of b naught minus x. And from that I'm going to add the natural logarithm of a naught. And from that I'm going to subtract off the natural logarithm of b naught. Continuing on writing down the right hand side, I just have kf times t. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now substitute back in the concentration of A and the concentration of B. And so what I want you to recall was that we made this substitution where we said the concentration of A is equal to the concentration of A naught minus X. The concentration of B is equal to the concentration of B naught minus X. And this was again just so that we can evaluate this integral so it was only a single variable integral. But now that we've done the integral, we can now convert back and we can actually write in now the concentration of A and the concentration of B directly back into this expression. And so that just means now my left hand side is 1 over concentration of B naught minus the concentration of A naught. And now I just have the natural logarithm of the concentration of A. And I'm just going to correct something real quick here because I forgot to carry through a minus sign. But now I'm just now moving forward. I have the natural logarithm of, and I've got b naught minus x up here, and so that again, that's just b. Just like over here, this concentration of a naught minus x, that was the concentration of a. So here I have the natural logarithm of the concentration of b, plus the natural logarithm of the concentration of a naught, minus the natural logarithm of the concentration of b naught, and that's equal to kft. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group together these natural logarithm terms using, if I'm subtracting, then they become denominators. If they're adding, they become numerators. So I have 1 over the concentration of B naught minus the concentration of A naught. And that's going to be then multiplied by the natural logarithm of all the positive ones. Well, I have a positive one here, and I have a positive one here. So on top, I'm going to get concentration of B times the concentration of A naught. And then I've got a negative term here and a negative term here. And so that I'm going to then divide by the concentration of A times the concentration of B naught. And that's still equal to KFT. So what we've just seen is that if we start with something that on the surface it looks deceptively simple, where we're just trying to find, we're using a rate law expression to predict the, the concentrations of our reagents in some chemical reaction. In this case, our chemical reaction was just products or reactants A plus B gives us some product P. And then we had this simple rate law expression that when we integrated it so that we can then determine or predict the concentrations at the end, it took this very long process with multiple steps in order to get to this ending point where we can now take this expression and start to use it to then predict what are our concentrations of A and B as a function of time, what you can see now or what you can now begin to appreciate is that it's, it's important to devise strategies to be able to simplify these rate law expressions so that then we can go back to doing the simple integrals that I showed you when we just had single component systems where I was just doing zero first and second order rate law expressions.